with us, Leo Tillman, uh, uh, financial Darwinism, and also the laureate, uh, uh, Edmund Phelps. Europe, you, this is a big issue for you. I mean, you're known for employment, Nehru, and labor, but your your number one fear right now is we can't become like Europe. Why, like Europe, why should we fear uh, becoming economically like Europe? Right. Well, a lot of American economists don't understand this subject. They think that, and, and Paul Krugman, unfortunately, is well, one wait, of wait, them. You're going to go after Paul Krugman <laughs> again? We did that in the previous hour. Uh, they think, they think that uh, economic dynamism, whatever it might mean exactly, is just fine in Europe. And, 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 and look, Europe is just fine. Look at all those indicators, high wealth, high productivity, and so forth. I, I think that it's just, just a terrible misunderstanding. Uh, economic dynamism means a, a willingness and an ability to, to innovate, change. It's all about change. From that point of view, Europe has been for decades and decades in terrible shape. There are no venture capitalists to speak of in Europe. There was no Microsoft in the 80s. There was no Netscape in the right. 90s. There was no Google in the present decade or the last decade. And, and startup rates generally are terrible. And if you look at the 20 largest firms in any country, you see there's almost no turnover from one decade to the next. It's the same old firms that are in the top 20. No. It's ridiculous. Let's so obviously, innovation, dynamism, is very, very bad in Europe. Now, that has consequences, Tom. I, I just want to mention uh, two of them, since we're doing two on, on this show. Uh, uh, one is that uh, young people are leaving the country to pursue careers in other countries. They, they, they can't make a go of it. What would be the second one? Secondly, uh, job satisfaction is far lower in France and Italy than it is in U.S. and Canada. And why is that? Yeah. It's because the work is boring. People have written whole books about it. I wrote a book about that, about Bloomberg surveillance, and look where it got me. What do you have, Ken? <laughs> well, Tom, uh, Tom brought up Japan, uh, Europe. I'm going to bring up Japan. Uh, Leo, you two have uh, Harvard Business. Business Review article calling for a government-sponsored enterprise, the first national bank of innovation. How is this different from what Japan used to do, which would be to That's have a, a great government question. bureau that would try to pick winners and losers and <clears throat> famously told Honda, we don't need another automaker, just stick with motorcycles? Well, I think it's very important to emphasize that we're not advocating the government to make investment decisions, and nobody is advocating this centralized command and control economy. There's a f misconception that a government-sponsored enterprise means centralized decision-making. The way we proposed the government-sponsored enterprise is a disjoint network of economic agents. And the reason for the government-sponsored enterprise status is because you wanted to have economies of scale, and you wanted to g gather capital around the world at attractive rates and then pass it to entrepreneurs. You can do it in such a way that it's not mm -hmm. at all contradictory to the bottom-up capitalism that we're advocating.